Okay, so we're going to look at the biology 1.6, ecosystems and human impact on the environment. And this is the foundation to your paper, okay? So let's make a start. Question one, Tracy investigated decay using two leaves of the same size from the same tree. She made a drawing of each leaf. She then buried each leaf in a separate beaker containing equal volumes of soil. She kept one at five, one at 15. And after one month, she removed the leaves from the soil and drew them again. So we got a different temperature change. And we're looking at the effect then of temperature on decay. So state one group of microorganisms that cause decay bacteria. Okay, there's your, there's your answer. Then finally, describe the results. So I'm going to look at the drawings. I can see... So when it's 5, we have got some decay. When it's 15, we've got more decay. So the results show that temperature increases the rate of decay. Move on to question 2 then. So the drawing shows some plants called duckweed. Students investigated the effect of nitrate on the numbers of living duckweed plants growing in beakers shown below. And we've got some tap water and some tap water with nitrate. Now, I'm just going to say here, this tap water, this is our control, okay, because we got the nitrate, we need something to compare to, and then we've got our results. Now, there's your plot, okay, and the thing, join them together, we join the dots in biology, chemistry is for curves, but biology, we're going to join the dots with a ruler. So that's a key point there. And from the graph, describe the changes in the number of plants. Okay, so I can see that between day one and five, it goes up, doesn't it? And this is at an increasing rate because the graph gets steeper. And then between five and seven, we then decrease slightly. It's not a fast rate, but it's a slight rate. The results in beaker A, the control, allow a comparison to be made. Why is it necessary to compare the results? Well, I want to see whether it's the nitrate effect in the results or whether it's something else. Okay, so we're ensuring that the only thing which is affecting them is nitrate. Diagrams show the plants in beaker B during the investigation. And we've got here, so we've got living, living, they're growing. And these darker ones are our dead and decaying plants. So is the from the diagram, on which day, 1, 3, 5, or 7, is the level of dissolved oxygen the lowest? Now, this oxygen, a bit of crossover. We're looking at our photosynthesis topic here, okay, if it's day one. And I've chosen day one because I've got the least amount of living plants. And then when are the number of bacteria the highest? Well, that's going to be bacteria are responsible for decay. So it's when we've got the most decay present, okay? So day seven there. Explain why the level of dissolved oxygen in B changes. Well, the number of living plants is changing. This means that the rate of oxygen produced as a result of photosynthesis also changes. Question three, the diagram below shows a pyramid of the numbers for a food chain found in a small wood. They've given us the pyramid. We have to fill the gap. So show the correct relationship in the food chain by adding one of the following numbers. So we know pyramid of numbers is going to go small, then big, smaller, then another small one at the top. Okay? The good way to remember it is if there's a tree here, the thing ends up looking like a tree, in a way. So if it's pyramid of numbers with a tree at the bottom, it ends up looking like a tree. In the space below, draw a labelled biomass pyramid, and I've labelled them up. So pyramid, remember, with biomass is going to look like a pyramid. Uh, finally... Show the correct relationship by adding one of the following labels to each of the levels. They've been quite nice here. They've only given us four. So we just have to go down. The biomass is decreasing as we go, so it's just going to go big to small. Okay, use the information on the opposite page in your knowledge to complete the following diagram. Well, if we look back, okay... We had an oak tree. We then had caterpillars. Okay, if I find it. We then had blue tits, then sparrow hawks. So, oak tree, caterpillars, sparrow hawks, and then I've got producer, second stage, consumer. Okay. In which of the following do all of the process add carbon dioxide to the air? 
Right, photosynthesis removes, photosynthesis removes, photosynthesis removes. The only one which is without photosynthesis is number four. So I'm underlining, okay? Bit of exam technique, underline, not highlight, not circle, underline. Okay. Intensive farming method use very large amounts of chemical pesticides to increase crop yields. The western flower thrips, and that's is an insect which eats crops, including fruit and veg, causing worldwide damage. Scientists at Swansea University, it's just down the road for us, have done research into pest control using bacteria which naturally live only in thrips. Bacteria affect the gene which controls eating. Then the thrips stop feeding and die. The bacteria pass naturally between the thrips. So use the information above to suggest one advantage. Well, the pesticide only affects the thrips. So if you think if we add it on, we're not going to kill the plants which he wants to grow. Apart from use of pesticides, state one other method farmers use to increase crop yields. I've put um, genetic modification here. We could have had um, fertilization as well. So I'll add that for you. Uh, we could have had irrigation, which is um, providing water. So there's a number of different things we could do there. Okay. Uh, so we're looking at DDT as a powerful insecticide, which was extensively sprayed onto crops in the middle part of the 20th century. Its use is now banned in many regions of the world because it resulted in the death of many top predators. One of the top predators affected was the American bald eagle, whose numbers in the USA dropped to only 834 in 1963. Food chain below shows the concentration of DDT in parts per million there. Now, what I'm looking at here is this is our example of bioaccumulation. Tough one to spell as well, so make sure we're spelling it right. And as you can see, the concentration is going up as we go further up the food chain. Now, from the graph, suggests the year in which DDT was first used in Florida as an insecticide. Okay? Now, we're looking then for the first time where it's going to drop. So we're going for 1948, okay, where the first drop is. Suggest why DDT is found in aquatic plants if it is only sprayed onto crops. So surface runoff water is eutrophication. Now the key word here, that's there, check the spelling, carries the chemical to the water. The aquatic plants and fish are not killed by the DDT, but the American bald eagle is. Explain the reason. So it's bioaccumulation. We said, yeah, that the concentration goes up. So we haven't got much in our aquatic plants, but then because... The small fish eat the plants, then the large fish eat the small fish, then the American bald eagle goes down and eats this big large fish. So he's eating all of that accumulated concentration. So there's your answer to that one. Final question then. I love this question. Miss Hillsden really enjoys this as well. So this is our basic outline of the carbon cycle. Okay. And the arrows are either all of them pointing towards carbon dioxide in the air means it's releasing and we've got one arrow here going out of the air and this one we know says green plants is photosynthesis okay now use the diagram and your own knowledge to explain in detail how carbon is cycled in nature start your account with carbon dioxide taken up by green plants okay so we've said that carbon green plants remove carbon dioxide from the air and lock in the carbon as glucose is starch so i've just looked at this arrow here when they respire they release energy from this glucose to send carbon dioxide back we've got then it's then also released via animals animals consume the plants which is this one here. So we're looking at consuming there. And then they also release it through respiration again. And when the plant and animals die, they process carbon dioxide to the air. Now there's two ways of doing this. There's either death, or de which leads us to decomposition, or fossil fuel formation. So through intense pressure and heat, we form fossil fuels. And then we burn fossil fuels. So fossil fuels are things like oil and coal.
Okay, so final bit then decomposition, decomposing bacteria respire as they break down plants and animals. The intense heat and pressure convert the remains into fossil fuels, which are then burned, releasing carbon dioxide. So I'll just move that back for you if you want to look at that answer there. And there's the end of your video.